Home is where connections are made, memories are formed, and ideas are born. And no one knows home better than NFM. Thanks for tuning in to I Am Home, the podcast that goes deeper than trends and dives into what it means to make your house a home. Well, Tyler Weiskup here from NFM headquarters with our chat captain, Becca Sudbeck. <laughs> Hi, Tyler. Hi, Becca. And Hillary Waltemath, Visual Display General Manager. Hey. Hey, Hillary. And today we're continuing our ongoing monthly topic of resolutions by talking organization with NFM's process improvement supervisor, Dave Welch. He's going to talk to us about a brilliant system for office organization that is surprisingly helpful for your home life too. But before we get to that, let me tell you why we're even doing this podcast, and that's because NFM is more than just your everything home store. We're in the business of improving lifestyles because your home life should be your best life. Learn more at NFM.com. And we're officially on with Mr. Welch. Hello, friend. Hey, Tyler. How's it going? It's going really well. You know, Dave Welch um, is a longtime NFMer, uh, father, husband. We were just talking before the podcast started. Uh, longtime listeners might remember him and his wife, Robin, from an episode that we did in, in 2020. So mm -hmm. um, Dave and I used to work together in NFM's operational excellence department, uh, which is where I first heard about this system for workplace organization um, that we're talking about today. Uh, it's called 5S. And again, I've, I've used a little bit of it at home uh, because it's that effective. Dave, I know that you have elements of this in your home as well. And we thought, hey, let's share a little bit about this technique and see if it's helpful for people as they're planning their New Year's resolutions and trying to get more organized. So Dave, I wonder if you can start by telling us briefly about what the 5S system is and maybe starting with like what the S's stand for. All right. So 5S is a methodology. It's part of the lean methodology. Um, I don't know if some people are familiar with Toyota being one of the leading manufacturers mm. in the world. Yeah. And one of their principles that they use to kind of organize their workstations, assembly lines is this 5S. Um, it's been adapted to not just manufacturing, but regular business world and also home life, things like that. Yeah. So there's some good principles. You don't have to follow everything to a T to get benefits from that. Um, which this is a bad joke. I was going to say, follow everything to a T. It's you don't have to follow everything to, to an S. S. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of that. But I was I like, embarrassed to say that, but I guess I just let it it's rip. Out there so now. Yeah. <laughs> this is okay. not being recorded, is it? Yeah. No, 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 no. Right. no. Um, so there's these five S's. Sometimes they, they I, they're pretty simple to, to follow. Um, they can kind of be confused, but they're, you're kind of done in a step. So the first one is sort. I'll kind of talk about each of these here in a right. bit but next one is sudden order third one is shine fourth one is standardized and the fifth one is sustain um and so we use this here at nfm we've, we've done it in our operations where outside of the business to organize people's workstations we've done it in cashiering uh, i've done it in it i've worked with ca uh, sales departments kind of all over and people have kind of benefited it and uh out of those five S's, so you have sort, uh, which is basically you're going to sort through, kind of remove anything that's not needed in the workplace. Um, and I'll take a deeper dive on each of these here in a bit. Uh, next one is set in order, so you're putting everything in its place. The third one is shine, which make basically you're going to clean, uh, remove waste, things like that. The fourth one is standardized, and the fifth one is sustained. So out of those five, what is the most challenging one, you think? Sustainment. Yeah, sure. sustainment. Yeah. yeah. So it's usually easy to implement things. You kind of you're excited, you're all fired up about it. Um, and then you kind of go through the honeymoon phase and then the sustainment kind of yeah, you revert back to the way it always was because change is tough. And so that one is always kind of the heart out of the five. The, the first one usually is really easy. Everybody's excited to sort through stuff and yep. throw stuff away and do that. But the sustainment is really the really the most important one mm -hmm. that's the hardest to do. Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense because uh, we get, we get a little lazy, right? I mean, mm -hmm. if we don't have a system in place to make sure that we're staying on top of it, like why it, it just, it's too tough to do. It's too tough to manage. So having, have, and, and like you said, we can walk through some different ideas for how to get to it when we get to that sustained stage. So I think um, that's, that's probably a differentiator. I think with like thinking about bringing some of this methodology into your home life is not all, not all of us have that 
process set up for us to evaluate um, the organization in our home. And if we have, have a little bit of that, it doesn't mean we have to like make it complicated, but if we have a little bit of that, we can make sure that we stay on top of it. So, okay, let's talk about that first S. Um, remind us what it is, Dave. So it's sort. So you kind of ask some questions to yourself. Do I really need this? Do I need this many of this? I mean, you, you kind of ask these questions because I think naturally people like to collect and keep things. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes hard to get rid of something because, hey, maybe I'll use this, you know, 20 years from now or whatever, yeah. and you'll keep it. Um, so it's hard letting go to some of those things. But you really have to ask those tough, tough questions. Um, you know, is this something I really need? Do I need this much of it? Um, and if you don't, then you kind of push it out to the side, make a pile of stuff you're going to donate. You know, if you think about, mm -hmm. uh, your home life, donate to the goodwill or, um, give away or something like that. Um, so you start to kind of make this pile, um, of, of stuff you need to fight a new home for. Yeah. Sorting, trying to have like, um, like you mentioned, you can either give away. Some people like to sell stuff too. I mean, yeah. that's a good way to like, if you've got Hillary, nice things <laughs> that you think are like, uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's it would be really bad for me to get rid of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe make a little money off of that. I know I mean, it's just an idea yeah. out there. Right. Um, but um, having having kind of a place to, to hold all this stuff as you're doing this process is super important to sorting, right, Dave? Yeah, and you want to, somewhat organize what you're sorting to because you know you may have a pile for this is going to goodwill another pile that you're going to maybe put in the garage sale or do whatever you want with it so um you know recently we kind of went through this we remodeled updated our our kitchen and so mm -hmm. there was a lot of sorting because we're like there was stuff that when rob and i first got married that we've literally never used or taken off of, of, of a box and it moved with <laughs> us like three times yeah. uh -huh. we're like well i think it's time to like get rid of it robin's pretty sentimental and oh, that was a wedding gift i'm mm -hmm. like well we've moved it two times never <laughs> used it let's get rid of yeah. it so it's when you, at home usually if you have a significant other you know this needs to be kind of a partnership as you're going through mm -hmm. and sorting and um and yeah. it and so that's always kind of a fun activity to, to try to con come to consensus, or you can always take the approach where you just sort through something and you don't let your spouse know what you're sorting through and <laughs> right. kind of getting rid of it. Yeah. 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 And then like 10 yeah. years later when they're looking like, for it, yeah. you're like, Oh my gosh, I don't know. Maybe then the move, I don't yeah. know. Remember we moved three years ago. So that's a, that's an interesting approach to take as well. <laughs> that gift comment though like of people giving you stuff like there's so much guilt around like mm. getting rid of something that somebody yeah. gave you. i aspire to be becca who doesn't uh, yeah i don't i don't feel <laughs> does it like worry that. too much no. about that but because i always think like if, if so, is someone gonna get more use out of this than mm, me yeah. then i don't think you need to feel That's guilty like yeah. if yeah. somebody else can use it I like better that. or more mm -hmm. often or needs it more than i do then i don't feel guilty giving it away because i feel like they are going to get the benefit of it and they should have it versus That's a really me good point. and I'm not using it and yeah. I'm not, it's not benefiting me. And mm -hmm. so like, I, I do try and like, before I throw things away, like, can I give this to someone that will appreciate it and use it more than I do? Mm -hmm. And then I feel like you can remove the guilt piece. Yeah. Smart. Or do you need six of something when you only need right. more? Right. Of it, right. You know, yeah. So Yeah. Uh, Dave, I really liked your example of like the kitchen remodel. Does anybody have any examples of like areas in your home that you struggle to sort? Yes, the phone chargers <laughs> and oh. like those. I, I I have a like a block thief at my house. Mm -hmm. what, I um, think sorry, it block, might be. Yeah, no, thief. like you know those little like the things you plug the cord into. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think it might be my fourteen-year-old son who is the thief. Mm. But like, <laughs> I don't know. I've tried to like. I, you know, organize them and like, here, is, here's, here they all are, but then they all disappear. So uh -huh. then I don't really know. But the cords and the, the chargers are always just a mess yeah. and it drives me crazy. Yeah. I'm the thief in our family. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have that for sure. We have this like drawer of like any cable that goes to anything yes. Is yes. in here. And at any time I'm looking for this yeah, you specific what, like charger of them? and I'm like, I don't even know what yep. this goes to. Yep. So yeah. question for all you guys. Do you have a junk drawer in your kitchen? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't really cars. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> We have a lot of drawers, but they're not just like random junk. Like they're all sorted with like 
purpose. <laughs> so good, Becca. You're so yeah. good. We just redid our kitchen, this beautiful kitchen, and that was the one. We're not going to have a junk drawer. And... <laughs> How long did it take till you have a junk drawer? <laughs> We're at, we have a junk drawer. <laughs> I looked at it this week, and I'm like, "How? How does this even uh -huh. happen?" Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just the intake of things that come in your uh -huh. home and things that you don't bring. That Becca has a very good system for like making sure that she sweeps through this stuff. I mean, I usually just throw it away. Exactly. <laughs> it's a good system. That is a good system. So like with 5S, if you go to, you know, somewhere like Toyota or even let's say our cash sharing stations here at NFM, we put drawer liners in the drawer. Mm -hmm. So everything has its place. Everything's in its place. And it's like a shadow board cut out. So if you need pens can only fit here or a tape mm. dispenser can fit here. So that helps eliminate that, you know, like visually, you know, where everything goes. Yeah. Is this um, a good segue into the second S set in, set in order? Yeah, that, I mean, that, yeah. that could be a definitely yeah. a good segue for, for yeah. that. So um, thinking back, like probably my first experience with the set in order, I remember going to my grandfather's when I was younger and he, in his garage, he had this pegboard mm -hmm. yep. and there was like a wrench or a hammer and then he traced around it and it was hanging on there and that mm. was essentially like 5s and i remember going yep. to my grab was thinking that was so cool <laughs> yeah like, i don't know why that stuck with me for uh -huh. years but it really had some common sense principles to that where visually you know if you're missing your hammer you know where it goes it, you know it's easy mm -hmm. to put in place um so that kind of the, the whole set is definitely important too and something to think about if you're setting so let's go back to the kitchen um, you know, you may have a dehydrator or a, I don't know, a juicer or something that you don't use that often. Mm -hmm. uh, you may want to put that in a storage room and not have it in one of your uh, premium covered uh -huh. spaces and things like that. So setting is really based off of how often you're going to use something and the ease of access to it. Yeah. So Because part of the lean methodology is just making sure that like your process is optimized and yeah. obviously in a, in a workplace you can kind of identify okay here's the steps that i need to accomplish this task and you can do that in your home life too like the if i'm, I'm making dinner on a regular basis i'm not using the dehydrator mm -hmm. uh except for That'd be delicious though right? uh, you know every every <laughs> meal food. dehydrated <laughs> <laughs> it's a new diet You're on to something. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that makes a lot of sense is like making sure that you think about I, I, we uh, video that we used to show. I don't know if you guys are still showing it, the making toast video. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So this toast video is like a classic um, kind of lean video um, really talks about kind of there's some five S, but process improvement right so it's basically a couple things right now yeah but. yeah yeah so there's a guy that he actually happens to be kind of a brilliant industrial engineer he's written a lot of books but he takes in a kitchen takes kind of the process of making toast mm. and trying to make it more efficient mm. um so instead of keeping your your bread clear across the kitchen from your toaster you know you really like you really like you relocate the bread close to the toaster. Um, also, while you're waiting for your bread to, um, you know, get toasted, you're working on something else, utilizing your time. It really comes down to kind of like the 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 the, 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 the eight waste really. Yep. Where you try to eliminate those waste out of your yep. work area, like waiting or motion or transportation yeah. and so. so i'm blending a, a, a couple yeah, examples but i thought it was a good one because um it i think a lot of us do this intuitively where mm -hmm. we're like oh, okay i know i have to sort like things together but sometimes when you think about like the operation of you making dinner like um you know save your saving yourself time was another episode that we just did mm -hmm. like if you're walking a clear across the kitchen to access uh that dehydrator for making your space food every night yes. which is the new thing maybe you need to relocate the the space the dehydrator did you, did you so ever have you that, that astronaut ice cream oh yeah when you're a kid yeah uh -huh. oh god that yeah. was bad but yeah, yeah. i good. thought it was so cool it's not good yeah. it's dip and dots ice cream of the future okay yeah. so we've been talking about set in order um i, I, I think again this is probably one of my uh, most favorite of these steps because it's so satisfying. We talked about the shadow, mm -hmm. um, shadow technique, having like 
drawer dividers? Are there any other techniques, um, things that um, either that we can take whole cloth from the 5S system or um, things that maybe Hillary, Becca, you guys have experienced in your home? Let's start with Dave and then you guys do I some think thinking. The Coolest things those P touch label makers. Yes, mm -hmm. so those yes. are those are great. Yeah. And um, so it must have been last spring. We have a, kind of a storage area, um, like essentially a large kind of giant closet, and it's a large area that we put racking up, which we sell that kind of racking here yep. at NFM. It's really handy. Yeah. So we put up racking. And then we decided how are we going to organize stuff? And we, so we took the Christmas stuff first and we, we got totes and uh, different bins and then labeled them. And we had my 10 uh, year old daughter helping put the labels. <laughs> so it really was, it was a pain in the butt kind of the do because you had to sort. I and mean, then we did the 5S process with everything right. and sorted through stuff, uh, set everything. And it was so easy this year for Christmas getting ready because we yeah. were pulling out bins and we knew everything was, was at. It was labeled and it was where years passed. It was an absolute nightmare. You know, you'd have something and have half Easter stuff and yeah. then like, you know, or Thanksgiving stuff. Mm -hmm. And so yes. this made it really easy and um, to do. And now, I mean, you can walk in that storage area and you can see, oh, this is Christmas, this is Thanksgiving, this is Christmas stockings or whatever it is. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, I think this is a uh, Tyler top tip is the the label maker. Yeah, sure. those are I love those. You can't go wrong with one of those. But what I really love that like the add on to this, and I, I've seen it. I don't I don't know if we do this all the time in the five S stuff, but like having you have you can have the label on the tote or on like the the actual product itself, but also just like where it goes, mm -hmm. right? Like it's you home. can, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whether you have that like outlined with the the chalk outline or not, like just knowing that like that's the home for the mm -hmm. thing is a super easy way to kind of like maintain this organization system that you're trying to set up. Yeah, that would help with the sustainment piece of it too, where it's mm -hmm. sure. has a home address where it needs to go. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, right. Super important in this step. Anything else? Any other ideas that come to mind when it comes to setting an order? In your own home. What's well, that? I don't know. One of you guys mentioned drawer dividers. Mm -hmm. I, I love that, especially if you have like really big drawers. I feel like mm -hmm. it helps to like. I think that like the whole like junk drawer situation. Like we don't have junk drawers. We have drawers where like there's random stuff. But I feel like we've divided it up and like each like mm -hmm. it has it all has a section. Mm -hmm. I think that and then like just even like smaller things to organize with in a bigger space. I mm -hmm. feel like helps a lot. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that's how I try and keep. And like the label maker, such a that's such a game changer. Like mm -hmm. I've labeled where all of my kids' clothes go mm -hmm. in their drawer. Like I've divide have drawer dividers in there, but yeah. then like they can take their own clothes and put them away because they know exactly where they go rather than just like throwing them all in yeah. a big drawer. I feel like that helps. I try that with my son so much. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, like hey, okay. can you put this away and then you've who knows where it's going to end up. <laughs> yeah, he says, I have no idea where my socks are. <laughs> I, I told you to put that away two months ago. What do you mean? <laughs> what have you been wearing to school every day? <clears throat> um, I, you know, we, we talked a little bit about bins, um, mm -hmm. you know, bin organizers, I think cabinets, um, storage cubes, and other, uh, other things that, you know, you can get. We sell a lot of that stuff here at NFM. I love um, M Design. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We carry has yep. a lot of this like really like sleek modern and then some more like contemporary options and it's like clear so you can see what's that's in it that's so clear. Yeah. yes yeah mm -hmm. for those things that like you know seasonal holiday stuff that you don't need to like if it's like clearly labeled but that yeah. stuff i'm thinking of like our like utility closet situation that holds like cleaning stuff and pet stuff and like do we have more of this or are we out of this i don't know because it's all like yeah. <laughs> yeah. scattered but just simply putting it into bins has helped so much to like you can find things quickly and then you're not destroying your closet trying to find the like yeah. one specific thing you're yeah. you're looking for and saves such a headache yeah that's uh, you brought up a really good point like with kind of the basic concepts methodology of lean <clears throat> is really having visual controls put mm -hmm. in place to easy like be able to look at something and see, hey, we're we are almost out of supply on this or out of stock on mm -hmm. something. Yeah. So like when you talk about cleaning supplies, things uh -huh. like that, because uh, the worst thing is, let's say you go to clean and then you don't have that particular cleaner, right. floor cleaner or whatever. So yeah. a way of setting up a system where it's organized, easy to, you know, do I need 
more of this or that. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of us are trying to be a little bit more sustainable too. So if you can have like your system set up where you've got glass bottles that, mm -hmm. you know, you're either mixing yourself or you're like getting from a service or something and having that visual easy clue, mm -hmm. I think is a, a, an easy one, something that you can build into, you know, part of your, your resolution mm -hmm. um, for this whole part of it. Okay. So we've only covered two steps really so far. We blended a little bit, but let's get into this, this third one. Um, shine. shine. So this is a clean part of it. Some people really enjoy this part too, you know, like, cause it feels like you're doing something you can see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like the results. Uh, Toyota, what they did in their manufacturing plants is they would paint everything white. So it's easy to see if it was dirty or it was leaking oil, things like that. Yeah. I'm not saying paint all your, <laughs> your, your house, house white. white or anything like that. A lot of people do. Uh, a lot of people do. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so maybe in your garage or something like that, a lighter mm -hmm. color would, would help with some of that too. Yeah. Um, but the, the cleaning part is definitely important because you don't want to go through all this and still have a place that's dusty or dirty. And um, I don't, it, it's, it's definitely an important part of this and also getting a system set up, which kind of comes back to like standardize and sustain a little bit is like cleaning something regularly where it's yeah. make it organized, easy to clean. And you make sure at least, you know, once a year or if once yeah. a month you're cleaning this area, yeah. dusting it, things like that. Like you mm -hmm. talked about your rack system. I mean, you're able to kind of like move things off of it. Like the, the, the pegs and every all that stuff is like easy to move around. It makes it easier for you to kind of manage and maintain. I mean, a lot of times that stuff gets dirty and you're like, I don't know, I don't want to look at it. Like right. I just, that's just where it's going to live. And, <laughs> like I'm only going to deal with it when it becomes a problem. And so I, I really love this step. Um, Hillary, you have any perspective on mm. uh, shining? You know, I love a really clean, clean space. Um, no, you do. It may not no, be the, like the tidiest, but everything's going to be very clean. And I bought like an online, like downloadable cleaning manual. I think it was like $30. Um, and what, what's amazing is it like significantly cut down the amount of cleaning supplies. Like her trick is like she cleans so much with just bleach, Wait, um, powdered Tide detergent, which I already use for laundry. And you can just clean so much with just the, and like clean, like disinfect mm -hmm. um, with so much. And so like the amount of cleaning supplies I have is shrunk so much because I'm just using a handful of things like um, Blue Dawn vinegar, bleach, and um, powdered Tide. Like I can clean nearly everything with that. Um, and then she gives you kind of like a, almost like a calendar or a guide, like how to go through your um, space efficiently, like where to start, start with like the time consuming, um, stuff or like think about your, your month and get these, these like heavy duty cleaning projects on a more like consistent rotation and work that into your calendar. Yeah. Um, so you're kind of like planning for it and you're not waiting to the point where you're overwhelmed by it and right. have to like, um, you know, disrupt a bunch of things. And so I don't know, I just outsourcing some things like yeah. relying on an expert to tell me what to do or, or something to follow. So have you found a way to clean windows with three kids and a dog? <laughs> I cannot like our, yes. our back door <laughs> window. Front, I'm uh -huh. like, what's the best way of, of doing cleaning a window? You know, the trick she uses is like vinegar with a couple drops of like blue Dawn dish soap, dish soap. Um, because the blue dawn is just like, I don't know what to say, like thickens the solution enough that it like clings to the window. Um, and there's like just enough of that, like it's like a bluing agent in there that mm -hmm. helps make it um, clean. And you can use like an abrasive brush to get like the dried on stuff, um, like dog drool or whatever, or, like hard water spots, like it cuts right, right through it. Which is, there you go, Dave. Yeah, I, you know I've learned something. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I know it's like changed changed my life in a in a dramatic way. I feel like following yeah. this like handbook. And I really, cleaning. yeah, I really love the idea of being able to outsource this kind of stuff whenever possible. Yeah, Just like spending time and energy trying to like identify how to do something mm -hmm. um like that's the time when i should be mm -hmm. doing the thing like i don't have like all this all this time in the world mm -hmm. to be like researching the best way to clean my winds windows mm -hmm. it'd be great if somebody figured that out for me and then i can just take 
those lessons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this like spin mop situation is replaced like the steamer and the Swiffer. And like you can wash your walls with it. You can wash your floors with it. You could do glass with it. It's like cut out so many of those other like gadgets that just like were cluttering a closet. Um, yeah. The other part of mm-hmm. like this, the system of organization, right? If you have less stuff, mm-hmm. it's easier to organize. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. I like this a lot. Like yeah, this a lot. We need to fan. make sure to to uh, provide the link again. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay, um, let's move on to the fourth S. So the fourth S here is standardization. So this is kind of you you've created the standard. So if you've put everything in its place, you create this. Your kind of work to create the standard. Everybody in your household, if it's at home, should be aware of kind of what the standard is and yeah. kind of get bought into following the standard. And, you know, we've talked about cleaning of mm-hmm. what that looks like or if there's any maintenance involved and getting kind of a system uh, of, of doing that. That's the tough thing, especially when you throw kids. That's kind yeah. of a wild card or mm-hmm. yeah. or myself when I get lazy and I don't put something back like mm-hmm. yeah. that always kind of cracks yeah. my wife up because I'll spend, you know, yeah. <laughs> like. Uh, Saturday morning, afternoon, organizing something. And then Sunday I'm working on a project that I don't even put back in the place where I've set it. So, yep. um, but the funny part, like my hunting, fishing stuff always stays very organized. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> my garage. Always, and I, of course I blame my kids for the garage and that was, it's not the case. It's just, I get <laughs> in the middle of a project. I just, you know, it's, makes it tough get to it later yeah Yeah. Yeah. Uh not a good mindset to to have on that Uh yeah well i mean that's that's the that's the beauty and horror of like living a a life right i mean sometimes we're not perfect about this stuff but at least like having a system in place helps try to make it as Mm -hmm. as good as it can be um and i I know in um the workplace and we use um some some tools to help kind of help us standardize this stuff and we've talked a little bit about this on the podcast right having like cycle charts or um pictures of how the job is supposed to look after it's done whether it's something cleaned a room cleaned or something like that um uh, display scoreboards for your your family letting them know that like hey this is the these are the expectations for the week and how and you've got your gold star, whatever that looks like for you. There's a lot of those different kinds of techniques that we can take, right, to being able to set that standard. Yeah, I think about um, the Tupperware cabinet oh, yeah. situation, because mm-hmm. like now we have like nice Tupperware that like the, the containers stack on the lids and the lids stack nicely, but it's of course in this awkward cabinet and you like stuff is like towards the back and it's like just take the time to pull things out to then put the things in the right spot. Like it takes seconds to do that. Like Mm -hmm. it doesn't really take Mm -hmm. any extra time to take these things that are in the way versus just like shoving it back behind there. Like Mm -hmm. it doesn't take that much time to just do it. Throw the the Tupperware back and then close the door (laughs) really fast. Yes. Yes. Can we switch from Tupperware to like, was it, uh, a glass with uh-huh. the lids and that uh-huh. and yeah. it's worked great but then the lids kind of uh-huh. wear out yeah. uh-huh. um the good thing with the glass at least everything's seated yes. easy for storage and, yeah uh, not everything's a, an its own like unique shape that doesn't yeah, like stack or organize my grandma at all. with a cool whip yes. containers and <laughs> is God it knows butter whatever. or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i can't believe it's not butter yeah. Yeah. Um, this one, uh, Vicky Pospisville, we were just talking to her via mm-hmm. the, a little while ago about, um, she's our mindfulness guest host. And she was talking about how her family puts their weekly schedule near the door so that everyone knows by day what's happening. I feel like that's another kind of like visual cue mm-hmm. of how you can kind of standard standardize your, your organization system. And part of it is, is, is the way that your life operates, but Part of this can be in just making sure that all, all your stuff gets back to where mm-hmm. you want it to go. So, okay. Well, um, the last step of 5S, Dave. Sustainment. We mentioned this is usually the largest challenge. I think everybody has good intentions, but to keep things sustaining month after month, year after year is always a challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cool thing, though, when you think about continuous improvement, though, you you could create a, a standard, you could do a 5S, but over time it's going to evolve and get better. So mm-hmm. sustainment doesn't mean you're 
not continually get better. It's just at least you're sticking to a standard. You're trying and not reverting back to the way things always were. Mm -hmm. So this is a challenge. And what do you think, Tyler? What would be a good way to help well, sustain, sustain what I life? like about this one is like we've set the standard in standardize. Um, sustain is okay. So we have a standard. Now, how do we continue to stay on top of that standard? A lot of it is like setting up communication avenues within your family where you're mm -hmm. you're you're bringing this stuff to people's attention in hopefully a way that's not insulting or, <laughs> or demoralizing it's just an a, a proactive approach to making sure that we we check in whether that's um in, in the workplace, right? You have management check-ins, performance reviews, um, department tours on a regular basis. So what are different things that you might be able to mirror within your, your home life where mm -hmm. you're able to do that kind of stuff? Um, Hillary, you were talking about like the cleaning manual, having mm -hmm. some of this stuff set up to where you know proactively this is when I need to clean. Mm -hmm. I think you can take that same approach to like organization and setting up a time to um like becca does mm -hmm. right like uh, once a week you know you do a, a declutter um and whatever that looks like for you and your family mm -hmm. this one is about just having that open line of dialogue and making sure that um you're you're consistently talking about mm -hmm. it yeah i heard something um recently i can't remember if i mentioned this or not but it was kind of a mindset shift that i felt helped me it's like a lot of these like tasks around the home or these projects aren't like you don't start it and stop it and like that's it it's a mm -hmm. cycle yeah. like laundry Ongoing. like yes. you're you're never just going to be like done with laundry before never. you finish the last load there's <sighs> more clothes to be washed so thinking about it as like a cycle that you just like move are like constantly moving through versus something that you like are completely done with and don't have to like think about anymore like these things yeah. are just the sustainability to me is just like a cycle that you have to be think constantly it, thinking about. I think a lot of it's lead by example, mm -hmm. you know, like practice what you preach type thing. And I also think if people have sweat equity in something like get your kids involved, your significant other, whoever mm -hmm. in your household to be involved with the five S in the organization where they're kind of bought into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Cause what tends to happen, you know, like you could go through Tyler, spend the whole afternoon organizing something getting no help from your significant other or whoever you live with. And then they don't put something back. They don't follow yep. it. And then you oh. kind of get fill me with rage. <laughs> yeah. You get, you get like that where if yep. you're both kind of bought in as a partnership, you're working together where you're having your kid using the P touch and labeling yep. things. Or I think if, if you do that, it's, has a better chance of sustainment and people ownership, will be kind of then, ownership yeah. bought in yeah. you with it. Also, it'll probably take the stress level down on yourself because um, you know, they're, they're bought into it too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's yeah. Good point. I like that. Um, one tip that I saw out there too, is like, if you can gamify it a little bit around mm. the system of like checking in and, and, and progress, uh, we talked about like gold stars on, on your, your chore chart or mm -hmm. whatever that looks like, but there's a lot of apps now where, um, I, there's one I, I looked up called habit habitica. Uh, I don't mm. know if I'm saying that correctly, but like, it's <laughs> like they, they, um, I just started playing around with it a little bit, but they actually make it, um, kind of, um, it's, it's got like a retro game, uh, like a Nintendo style game mm -hmm. approach where it's like pixelated fun and they set up progress reports and like, you can look at it and it, it, it you can conquer quests. It's kind of that way. And so hmm. if you can figure out how, what, however that works for you in your home to um, make sure that this part of the process is um, not as much of a chore as it appears, <clears throat> I think that's going to make it easier for you um, individually and for your family too. Yeah. So, um, okay. Any last words, thoughts for the 5S system? I got something here. Okay. So it's New Year's, New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. Let's go through. I'm, I know Becca probably has everything perfect <laughs> and there's no opportunity. Right. What are, Tyler, what are you going to do to 5S and try to apply this here over the next month? Yeah. Well, I think, um, so that that's the issue like you would just mention is the buy-in from everyone in the household <laughs> <laughs> like i i can be pretty anal but then like if it's not happening then i just kind of throw up my hands yep. and, and do a little bit of giving up so um i think the idea is for me is to set some 
individual time um, on a monthly basis to address uh, room by room together so that we can kind of create what that system looks like. And it's going to be a process over the year. I'm not going to try to tackle everything all at once. It's like, how do I set some time where we're together coming up with what the solution is for each of these spaces mm -hmm. and try to take it one step at a time. Hillary, what, what about you? Oh, I think I want to start with just really like taking a hard look at the stuff I'm hanging on to and <laughs> like, do I really need it? Will I, I, there's a lot of stuff. Well, maybe, or what if, um, and it's stuff that like, I really like, but you know, my sister is like moved her shop and is looking at a new place and was I would feel really good about her having some of this stuff yeah. and like getting her started on the right foot with having some some things and I think to your point about if somebody else can use it it's mm -hmm. collecting dust like what I've got so yeah, taking Becca's a hard best look advice and, yeah I, I, <laughs> words of wisdom yeah I really like it mm -hmm. what about you Becca I'd say I'm really good at like, all, I feel like a lot of areas in our house that are like common areas, but um, my closet, I've got to figure that out. So that's like the one area that like, mm -hmm. I just don't, that's a project, but will take a lot of time. Yeah. And I feel like I said, like, usually I'll have like an hour or like, I'll, like that's going to take like a week or more. Yeah. Um. So that's, I'm going to try and tackle that it, in like in the first quarter of this year. Yeah. I don't like set New Year's resolutions. I do like a few smaller goals and that's, mm -hmm. that's one of them yeah. that I've, I've got a mostly, mostly like sorting and getting mm -hmm. rid of stuff. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you yeah. go. Dave, did, did we do you yet? No. The okay. garage. Ah, this okay. is, I, I need to figure out with 50 basketballs and soccer balls and everything with kids of like, how, how do you store those type of things and organize that? And, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm sure my neighbor just laughs because I will pull everything out of the in the driveway, <laughs> organize it, put it back in. And the next nice day out, do the same thing. And uh -huh. it's just an yeah. ongoing cycle where, um, you know, it, it seems like you just, you have something organized and then you acquire more stuff with your kids and stuff mm -hmm. like, and it just builds. And then it's, there's just part of like home ownership too, like constantly buying like a new tool to fix something. Yeah. And then you just start collecting it before, you know, you've got a garage full of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a system. It's a process, mm -hmm. you know, we're not going to get it perfect, but I think some of this, like it, it almost, um, what I like about the 5S system is it, 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 it like takes you outside of um, the personal attachment mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, because it's just, it's, uh, I don't know. It seems so like technical uh, versus like when I'm supposed to organize it without a process, without a system, mm -hmm. like a lot of times I'm just like, oh, well, mm -hmm. I don't know. it's too free flowy. This mm -hmm. is like the steps, the organization uh, mindset that you're in um, is, it, in my opinion, it's totally different. Well, it, it gives you structure because a lot of times you look at something like, where do I even begin? The, where do I start at? Mm -hmm. Well, you start yeah. out with sorting and then yep. you just kind of make your way down True. the list. Yeah. Well, uh, we've covered a lot today. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure people are just jazzed now to run out and start their organization journey. So we're going to wrap this thing up. Um, Dave, thank you for being here to cover the 5S system. Uh, those steps again, sort, set in order, shine, standardize, and sustain. Um, take them and um, let us know how, how you did with them. Uh, thanks to Becca, Hillary, and of course, our producers, Scott and Renee. And of course, to you for, for listening. Now, I invite you to head over to nfm.com where you can shop 24-7 for today's top furnishing styles. And until next time, remember, home is what you make it. Thanks for joining us today for I Am Home with Tyler Weiskopf, Hillary Waltemath, and Becca Sudbeck. No one knows home quite like NFM. So if you'd like more information on home design at NFM, please check out nfm.com and leave us a review on the podcast platform of your choice.